I'm going to talk to you today about uh, writing native bindings for uh, Node.js. So you know you have a C library or some other kind of library, and uh, you want people to use it using Node.js so that they have an opportunity to write applications in JavaScript. Um, you know, you want to appeal to the community that doesn't know how to use and how to write programs in C, then uh, you're going you're gonna to have to make a native add-on. And um, when, whenever you're dealing with C, there are some common scenarios you're usually faced with, and those are the ones I'm going to talk about today. So my assumption is that you know, I, I, I know how to write in C, and I've used it for years. But in my recent past, I've been working with JavaScript. So going back to it, I wanted to use it as little as possible, you know, just to accomplish the task and then put all my abstractions that I wish my, my application developers to use, uh, write those in JavaScript. So um, <laughs> the benefit is that, uh, you know, when when your JavaScript interface is ready, it looks a lot like the C API. So you, know, you can even reuse the documentation. I use that all the time. But there are some things that you can avoid exposing to JavaScript that are specific to C. So if you have a function that, that uh, takes a function pointer in C, you know, then, then uh, in most APIs, it also takes a context. Otherwise, the function pointer is pretty useless for generic purposes. And so uh, the. In JavaScript, context is not a problem. Like JavaScript is the king of context. You can just make a closure, call it a day, right? So you don't need to expose that to C. I mean, why, why would you send a JavaScript object all the way into C and then have it come all the way back when you can just put it in the context and that's it? The other thing that, that you don't need to expose when you're writing a minimalist uh, JavaScript API is, is things like, like uh, variable length arrays. I mean, C doesn't have them, right? So you always have two parameters. You have the array which is just a chunk of data. And then you have an integer saying, you know, if you read more than this, you're going to seg fault. But in JavaScript, obviously, the array length is always a member of the array. So you don't need to expose that either. So in general, uh, what you want to do is uh, to avoid too many complications is you assume that the C library works as advertised, right? So, so data coming from there is reliable. So the, the, the only case where you have uh, Variations is if you have a string that can be null, then you know, then you should check is it a string, and then if it's not, then set the JavaScript correspondent to null. But aside from that, you can pretty much trust all the data because C is strongly typed, right? So if it's an integer, it's an integer for sure. Uh, on the other hand, from JavaScript, if you get any kind of data from JavaScript, it could be anything, right? So so before you send it to C, you want to make sure that it is what you need it to be, and uh, you. You do that, first of all, with documentation. I mean, the C API says it takes an integer. So if the application sends you a string, well, that, you, know, you throw an exception and call it a day, right? Um, and the other thing you want to do keep, to keep things simple is you want to avoid the, 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 the JavaScript thing where you know, the function can take one parameter or it can take three parameters. And if the second parameter is, is, is a function, then that's really the third parameter because they left out the second parameter, all that stuff. You just skip that. Uh, be, be, be very strict about it, because this is the lowest level of the API, right? If, if people want to implement uh, argument juggling, let them do that with, with, with your API and then give you predictable parameters. And of course, require them to have a type. That's another kind of argument juggling. So uh, when you're implementing your, 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 your add-on, uh, one, one of the good uh, practices that, that I found is to, to, to have, to have the, the C++ code mimic the way JavaScript works, right? Um, and in particular, uh, JavaScript can throw exceptions, right, which completely blow the stack, right, and go to the nearest exception handler. So, so I found it very useful to, to organize my C++ code the same way so that it works like JavaScript. And except, of course, I mean, you can have exceptions in C++ as well, but uh, I, I found that it's, it's best to just, uh, to just uh, uh, have, the, have the function stack return uh, with like false or something, and then, and then you know that an exception has been thrown. Because the outermost binding doesn't return anything. That's the way the, the bindings are implemented in, um, in, in Node. Um, but but if, 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 the, if a helper that is called by the binding returns false, then you know that something went wrong somewhere deep in, in your helper functions, and you can just quit. Because you know that as soon as it goes back to JavaScript, an exception was thrown, and it's going to jump. 
So, so this, is, this is what I'm talking about, right? Like at the, at the bottom there, you have the, you have the binding, which calls some helper function to establish the parameters that it needs to pass, like uh, doing uh, validation and filling out structures and so forth. And, uh, and, uh, and if anything goes wrong, it returns false, right? And uh, it throws an error and it returns false. And if it calls a helper, then the helper throws the error. So, so this, is, this, this, this mimics JavaScript because the, 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 the exception is thrown at the point where something failed. You don't return false and you expect the caller to interpret the return value as, huh, hmm, something went wrong, I better throw an exception. No, throw the exception right there and then just bail. And, and you, do this, you do this throughout the stack and then if you do it that way, then, then your functions can be uh, composed. So if a structure contains another structure, all the, all the ones, all the functions that you write that convert from JavaScript to, to C, they will all behave the same way so you can combine them. So for example, uh, let's say we have a structure like these coordinates and, and we want to write a pair of functions that, that go from JavaScript to C and from C to JavaScript. So the C converter, let's write it so that it returns true if the structure has been successfully converted to a C structure or throws an exception and returns false if, if one of the parameters wasn't like a double, it was a string or something. So, so the, the other things, the, these are C-specific things that, 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 I found, that I found good to do. Um, and that's uh, to always pass in, obviously, which C structure you want me to fill out and, um, and obviously from which JavaScript object you want to take the data, right? And uh, the way I do it is, you know, if, if the validation succeeds partially, then, then I don't want to uh, mess up the structure that was passed in by filling out some of the members, but then the last one fails and so the structure is partially filled out. So what I always do is I create a local variable that has the same type, I fill out that one, and if I successfully filled out that one, I just basically assign it to the one that was passed in, like uh, right here at the bottom. And then return true and call it a day. And of course, if you need to, I mean, you know, it's not as simple as it sounds because, you know, you, can ha you, you, you may need to allocate pointers if you have strings and so forth. And, you know, you don't, you don't get free cleanup <laughs> by doing it this way, so you still need to worry about that. But then you can just have like a go-to at the bottom that says if it fails, then just free and return false, you know because um, you will already have thrown the exception by then. So, so this, this, for example, is how you convert to, to coordinates. First, first you retrieve it. Uh, up here, you retrieve the latitude. And then if it's not a number, then you, know, you throw an exception, you return right away. Otherwise, you assign it to your local C structure, right? And you do the same thing for lo uh, longitude and altitude. And if, if all is well, then you just basically copy it into whatever structure was passed in. And that's it. This is an internal function, so you don't really need to worry about what if destination is null, because this is not a function that is part of your API. This is an internal helper function, so you know, you're responsible for not passing null. And uh, actually, I'm currently doing things this way in my project, but uh, you know, with, with recent versions of none, you can, you, can actually, you can actually add an additional check here, which is like if you, if you create a string, then string creation may fail, and so, 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 so this non-new lat may actually be empty, and, and, then, and then that's a maybe type, and you can actually check if it is empty before you try to convert it to a, a JavaScript uh, string. So these are just things which give you additional validation to avoid even more sec faults. I haven't included those yet. So, so the observation, of course, is because of the way, oh, geez, okay. So don't scroll on these slides, that's the moral of the story. So, uh, yeah, so the observation to be made here is that if you, if you uh, write your converters that way, then you can compose them. So you can reuse, if, if, you, if your C API uses the same structure in multiple places, you can use the same converter and, and make it part of a, a, a larger converter and so forth. Now the JavaScript converter is somewhat simpler because we have chosen to trust data from the C side. All it does is return a JavaScript object and, uh, and it accepts a pointer to a, to a C structure. And, um, uh, since, since there are two cases, one where you're filling out an existing JavaScript object and one where you're creating one, it's cool to use uh, one of these uh, C++ specific things, which is that you can have a, a default value for, for your formal parameter, um, which, which creates a new object if it's not already there. So, so then this is what the, the, the JS converter for such a structure would look like, very simple. Um, so, so this is the default value that I'm talking about, right? Meaning that by the time you get to the body of the function, you always have a place, a JavaScript object into which to store your things, and then you simply 
You simply store them, and that's it, and you return. Simple as that. And the same thing holds for the JavaScript objects, right? Like, you can, you can compose those as well. You can assign uh, an object that was converted from a C structure as a property of a larger JavaScript object. So, so th these, these are the general principles. Now, there are some things you can automate when, when you create this native add-on uh, using our uh, old friends. Jeez, uh, where did this go? Yeah, there, cat, grep, and awk, right? Uh, like, but this only works really for, for like uh, 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 preprocessor constants and, and enums. Uh, you, you can't really automate functions because I'll show you why. There are some API-specific semantics which you cannot capture with scripts. So, so then the way, I, the way I always do my add-ons is, is, is they end up with, with these constants and then with the enums uh, namespace like this. So it makes for some longer JavaScript code, but whatever, you know, that's what uh, Minify is for. So then here's an example of a simple binding. Uh, this is a very simple function. It takes primitively valued parameters and it returns a primitively valued result. And these are macros, which are basically, you know, if the argument count is not two, then throw an error and return. And uh, if the argument count, or if the argument zero is not a number, then return, throw an error, return, you know? So, so, so that, you know, bail kind of uh, approach. And, and then you just call the C API, and then you set the return value right away, and that's it. Very simple. So uh, on the other hand, of course, when you're dealing with data, things stop being so simple, because now you're dealing with pointers, right? And so, so what I found is that in, in a, in, when you're wrapping a library, you usually have two kinds of pointers. You have a pointer which, where, where the pointer itself is not that important, but which is used for conveying data which exceeds the size of a primitive value, right? So it's just a structure, and, and you're interested in the contents of the structure, not where the structure is stored. That doesn't matter. And, and then there's the second kind of pointer, which is like a handle, which is very often found in, in, in C libraries, like a, like a file star when you use fopen or, or, you know, I mean, Unix ones are usually integers, so they fit into a primitive value, but... Uh, you know, pretty much all libraries have these handles, like you have a timer star, or, or like if you take glib, you'll have plenty of handles. But the bottom line is with a handle, it's usually an opaque structure because the library is using it internally, but the, 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 the value of the handle itself is very important, and it's not like an integer, so, it, so you cannot trust that, it, that it's an integer. In fact, you shouldn't treat it as an integer. So did I cover all the points here? Yes. So, so then, so then let's, 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 uh, let's see how we do this with, with a data structure using, using this uh, example with the, uh, with the coordinates, right? So let's say we have, we have two APIs, one of them that finds a restaurant by name, and one tell, tells you if there's a restaurant located at, at, at the coordinates given, right? It's, it's a very contri contrived example, but it's, it serves to illustrate the point. So, so, you have, so here you have the, the local coordinates, right, which, which the C API fills out, right, and then you use the converter that we've created to return it to JavaScript, pretty simple. And um, in fact, you, you, in this case, you're filling out an existing value. So, so this kind of uh, brings the C semantics to JavaScript in that you pass in an empty object and you get an, an object that has three properties. So it's, but whatever, I mean, it's a, it's a very low level JavaScript API onto which you then build anyway, so it's, it's all right. So then, um, so then uh, this is the other binding for, for um, determining whether there's a restaurant at the given coordinates. And, and in this case, you convert to C coordinates over here, um, uh, and you fill out the structure, and uh, you, can see the, you can see the semantics. If the conversion doesn't work, then you bail, because the C coordinates will have thrown an exception. You don't need to throw the exception in the binding. It's already thrown. And then you set, and then you call the API, and you return whatever the API returns, and that's it. So, so with handles, with handles, uh, what libraries do is they usually give you like uh, like two bookends: one for creating the handle, and one for telling the library, "Thank you, you may now release the resource." So that's how it works with pointers. That's how it works with files, sockets, uh, you name it, and and uh, uh, like handles which are purely internal to the library. They all have an open close. So they behave just like JavaScript, when you have set timeout and set interval, clear timeout, clear interval, and so forth. And uh, these are some of the examples. So, so in that sense, all handles behave in a certain way, right? Uh, you, have these, you have these bookends, and if you overwrite the value, if you forget the, 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 the value of the handle, that's it, it's going to leak. 
right? And if you try to release it multiple times or if you try to use it after you've released it, then, then you know, in, it starts to go off the rails. So either nothing happens, in which case you're maybe lucky, except if you expect something to happen or an error is returned or, you know, set fault. Uh, but how do we bind this to JavaScript, right? Because like I said, handles, it's, it's, not, it's not a good idea to treat them as integers, right? Because if you pass an integer into JavaScript, then you know, people can overwrite it. And then all of a sudden, you've got these, these weird pointers pointing all over the place when they come back, right? So, so, so what I've chosen to do is I've chosen to use this, uh, oh, for crying out loud. There. Is that it? No. There. So I've, I've chosen to use V8 and, 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 and non, because that's what Node runs on currently, uh, to, to create these, uh, these, these special objects. Like in JavaScript, it's very easy to instantiate a new kind of object. You just create a function, and then when you instantiate the function, it, the, the resulting objects are of that type, right? So, but uh, one of the V8 only uh, uh, features that is accessible only from C++ is to assign properties to these objects which are completely invisible from JavaScript. You basically add pointers to, to a, a class of object. And, and so, so you can store these pointers in, in a way that is completely invisible. It's, it's, not like, it's not like defined property kind of invisible where it's just not enumerable but otherwise it's there. It's, it's, it's completely inaccessible from JavaScript. So, so what I do is, for, for handles, I, I've created this class which, which has three things. It has instantiation, you know, you get a handle from the library and you turn it into something that you can use in JavaScript, which is completely opaque from JavaScript, just like your handle is in your C++ side. And you have one where it converts back, like give me back my native handle so I can talk to the native library again. And, um, and then you have to have a third function which basically says, okay, this, uh, you know, scrub the handle because I have released the native handle, but I don't have control over JavaScript uh, garbage collection, so, so the JavaScript object may be around still, but f henceforth it shall be an invalid handle. So, so, then, so then basically you, you scrub the handle and now it's a plain JavaScript object. The, but the good news is since you've scrubbed the, uh, the handle and since you know the type of the object, then if somebody attempts to use it later on, you know that this is an invalid handle, so you're not going to blindly pass it through to the native API and potentially sec fault. You can actually throw an exception saying, hello, you've used, you've used a stale handle or, or whatever. So, so this is what the class looks like, lots of code here. Uh, basically, you instantiate a new JavaScript class up here, and then when somebody says new, you create a new instance of that class and you set you set this, uh, you set this uh, handle, the, the native handle, you store it inside the instance. And, and you, you set aside room for a handle right here using this, uh, using this set internal field count which, which non wraps for you. Uh, or is that V8? I, I forget. But anyway, uh, you can look at the API docs. And then you have the other function resolve which basically says give me back my native handle, or if it's not there, it throws an exception saying, sorry, this is a stale object, and, and that's great because it informs programmers that, that they did something out of sequence, right? So they, you know, they close the file and then they try to write to it. That's, that's just not right. So, so this is what it looks like in your bindings. Uh, you create a new class and you give it this name so that you can distinguish one type of handle from another. It's very convenient. And in the debugger, it's going to say remote resource handle. It's not just going to say object, right? Uh, so people will know what handle leaked or, or whatever they're trying to debug. Will, they will have more information. Oh, for crying out loud, this really sucks. All right. So in, in, in a binding, what you do uh, is, is you, just use the, you just use the new and the resolve. So, so in, in one case, you, you return a new handle, and then you, you, you resolve it when you get it back from JavaScript. And, and you know that it hasn't been messed around with JavaScript because it's simply not accessible from there. So there are situations where, uh, where you can create the same handle twice. So if you, if you're just, if you, if you just do like open and close, then, then you don't really have that opportunity because whenever you call open, you get a new native handle anyway. But there are APIs where uh, because of the limitations of C, the, the API designers have chosen to, to give you back your native handle in a, in, in a callback so you can close it from the callback or, or whatever, right? And so uh, if, you, if you want to pass that on to JavaScript, it's tempting to just 
create the new JavaScript handle because we have this convenient call and call a new function now, right? But that's a bad idea because, because now you have two JavaScript objects which both contain the same native handle, right? Uh, yeah. So they both contain the same uh, native handle, uh, and, and if you close, if you call close on one, then that native handle will become invalid. But now you have a perfectly valid native handle running around, which doesn't have any, uh, sorry, you have a perfectly valid JavaScript handle running around, which doesn't have a, a corresponding uh, native handle because you've already closed the file. So, you know, if you call close again, you will pass it through blindly to, to the native side and you will be in trouble. So instead of doing, instead of just creating new native handles for, or new JavaScript handles for the same native handle, what you should do is you should pass uh, a reference to, to the one native handle that you created into the callback, and, and you do that with, with a persistent object, right? Um, so, so you create a persistent object in your binding, and then you pass it to the callback. And then in the callback, you give it back to JavaScript as a convenience, right? And, and then you will only have one native handle running around. So, so over here where, where I commented out native handle new, Right, this JS remote handle new instead of that, just, just dereference your persistent and give that back to JavaScript, and you will maintain the one-to-one -one relationship with native handles. So callbacks. Callbacks are the major thing that, that you will run into, because um, you, know, you have to create function pointers and so forth. And, and there is one very, very important thing that I ran into with, with trying, to, trying to bind a fledgling uh, library, which is that the, the, the the kind authors of the fledgling library forgot to include the context parameter into, in, one of their, in one of their callbacks, right? So, like, you know, JavaScript, you know, you can make functions on the fly all the time. Like, if you declare a function inside another function, whenever you call that function, it instantiates a new function object, right? But in C, you can't do that, right? In C, when you declare a function, that is physical. That is a chunk of memory from A to B, which is marked read-only and executable, and, and it's stored who knows where, and that's it. You can't just copy it, right, and make a, make a new instance of it, right? So, so um, if you don't have this context parameter, you are in pretty deep water, right? Uh, in fact, you, 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 need to, you need to use crazy stuff like, uh, like foreign function interface where, where you essentially can create new functions at runtime uh, by using some really crazy assembly, which is of which the it is documented for 59 platforms and you hope that it works, right? So just, if there's no context, then just, you know, file a bug with, with the native library. So I'm not gonna, I'm not even gonna go there. I did it once, okay, it's ugly, don't do it. Um, but, uh, you know, it's much easier to just file a bug upstream to please add a context to the callback because nobody's gonna use it that way anyway. All right, so there are two kinds of callbacks that I've been, able to identify one, which is like uh, the typical completion callback. If it gets called, it means it will never get called again. And then there's the other kind of callback, which is like uh, you open the file, here's your handle. You can have callbacks on the file when the read completes, when the write completes. You can even have periodic callbacks, you know, a file modification callback, you know, some outside process modifies the file, you, you get notified. And you keep getting notified about stuff that happens to this handle until you say close the handle. So, so this is the bookended version, which, which is this explicitly removed, and the other one is the implicitly removed. So the, the distinction is important for us because whenever we get a handle, we're gonna attach stuff to it. So we need to know when the handle will go away, and, and, and the when the handle will go away is highly API specific. So you know, automation at that point is out of the question because you need to think about when it's gonna go away. So at that point, it's like AI complete, right, when it goes away. So, cause, and you need to remove stuff when the handle gets closed. So, so um, yeah, so, and, and then of course you have the hybrid case where, where uh, you can, you know, close the file, release the watch, but if the callback returns false, it does the same thing, right? And so here there's, there's, a, there's a really interesting gotcha, right? Because, you know, let's say, let's say the file, the application goes like this. If the file changes, read the file, and if the file contains ABC, then I don't care about changes anymore, right? So, so, so you open the file, uh, you, or you start watching the file, and you, you, you watch for the changes, the change arrives, and you say close the handle. But you say so from the change notification callback, right? And then additionally, you return false, saying I don't want to watch the file anymore. So it's like you return false, meaning 
free the handle and free all the binding associated stuff that you have stored on the handle, but you, you've also freed it explicitly, right? So if, you, if you're not careful, then you're going to free it twice in your bindings. You, I, you're going to free the overhead associated with the handle twice, and you know, you're going to have yourself a really nice sec fault again. So, but the good news is that our native handle, right, we scrub it. And then we can check, did we scrub the handle already? Yes. OK, well, then I don't need to scrub it again, right? But we need to implement that. And you need to remember that. So that's why I'm talking about it. Is please avoid this pitfall. Hello, pitfall ahead, you know? So, so here's an implicit callback going back to the simple case. Uh, so you, know, you, call, you call your JS callback whenever you get a native callback. You retrieve the JS callback from the context which you do have, fortunately, because we're talking about a, a mature API, not one of those fledgling ones. And then after that, you can be confident that this callback will never be called again, so you can free all the associated stuff with it, doing all these deletes over here. Uh, so now with the explicit one, like I said, you have the bookends, and you don't free it. You free it only, only, when, um, only when, you, um, uh, when somebody calls, you know, close the file or stop watching. But, uh, but the, the different, another difference between implicit and explicit is that for an implicit callback, it's enough to pass just the JavaScript function that you're supposed to call and any convenience handles to the native callback. Because that's enough information to call the callback, right? But with, a, with an explicitly removed callback, you need, you need, to, also, you need to also pass all this, all this information that you would normally pass to the callback. You also need to pass it to the handle. Because when, when, when somebody says, stop watching the file, uh, you have to ask yourself, um, OK, so which callback do you want me to remove? You know, like which JavaScript callback? It's not just enough to know which native handle I'm supposed to pass on to the native API, which persistent objects were there. I'm, you also need to know the, the callback that you're supposed to remove. So, so at that point, what you do is, is when, you, when, you wrap your, when you wrap your native handle, uh, you don't assign a native handle into this, into this JavaScript wrapper, but rather you assign a structure into it which contains a native handle, and it contains everything that you need to, to, clean, it, to clean up because that's everything that you're going to get back when somebody says, close the handle. I've had enough of watching this file. And, and, and so, so it is at that point that you need to have everything that you need to free, not inside the callback. So, so then you create this, this kind of self-referential structure. And it, it is self-referential because it's a C structure, and it contains the, the, this convenience handle which you're going to use in the callback. It contains the function that you got from JavaScript, or, or a persistence reference to that function. And it contains the native handle, of course, right? But this, uh, this, um, um, this handle right, is actually the, 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 the JavaScript handle that you created that contains a pointer to this structure. So that's why it's self-referential, right? So, so, that, so this JS handle actually contains a pointer to, to, to this structure. So it references itself. But you, it's good because you need it from both the callback and from the binding. So, so this is what I'm talking about. So when you, when you create this, when, when, when somebody says, I want to watch this file, then you create one of these data structures, which I showed you. And of course, you store the watch. In, in one of its members, and, and you store the function which, which the, the, the application has asked you to call. And then you also store this thing itself in, inside, inside uh, uh, this C structure. And then, of course, you, you, you send back the, the wrapped handle to JavaScript, and now you know, what, you know which callback to remove, you know which native handle they're talking about, and you know which JavaScript object wraps that native handle when the callback does arrive. So then, so then when you unwatch, you have everything you need to clean up and as if nothing has happened, just like the native API cleans up as if nothing has happened. So you, you, and you use resolve to, to get back the pointer to your native structure. And then, and then of course, if the, if the unwatch works, then you delete everything and everybody's happy and you have cleaned up. And notice that this is what I'm talking about. This is, this is what completely prevents automation. Like, you have to actually check the return value of the native API. And at that point, it's completely API dependent. Like, it could be a true false. It could be a value of an enum. You know, it could be negative one if, if it's like a syscall, meaning there's an error. So keep all this stuff that you allocated in the watcher. Keep it around because the watcher hasn't been removed. It failed to remove the watcher. So you need to process these values, making this uh, on the exercise available only to humans to actually implement this. So now this is what the callback looks like. 
Uh, again, it's almost the same as, as, a, as, a, as an implicit callback, except you don't delete anything because this callback could be called any number of times. So you need to keep this context around. So you, at the end there, you can see the, the, the JavaScript call. So when you have a hybrid callback, then, then, then things get interesting, and this is how you avoid the, the, the double free. And, and we do it by, by calling resolve. Right, so, so, so this is what we have here, right? It's almost the same again as, as the explicit one. So here we call, right, and except we have a return value, and then we convert the return value to a Boolean, which we then pass along to, to the native library, right? And if the return value is false, then, then we do not assume that, that the pointer that we got here is still valid, because as part of the call, uh, this call may execute any, any number of JavaScript frames embedded in one another, one of which could be a call to unwatch file name, in which case this, this, uh, this object here, this object will have been scrubbed by our previous API, by the implementation of our API. So then, so then after the call, this, this pointer may no longer be valid, which means you have to resolve it again. So, so you resolve it again, and you throw an exception. And the, and the programmer is going to say, oh, OK, well, yeah, OK, so I've double freed it. So like, OK, maybe I don't need to return false there anymore. Or maybe I shouldn't free it explicitly if I'm going to free it implicitly. Or you can just ignore it. it it's up to you. you know, it's, it's really up to you. You're implementing the binding. But the bottom line is you will not set fault if you, if you resolve it again afterwards. So anyway, that's, that's it. Um, Thank you very much, and I would like to thank my colleague Babu, uh, who helped me with these things. He, he ran into them, I ran into them, and so we hammered these out, and I figured, okay, 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 okay. We should write these down because, you know, other people may run into these, so let's just prevent that situation, nip it in the butt, so to speak. So in conclusion, uh, the motto is, oh, what fun it is to write the JS interface, hey. But anyway, that's just my conclusion. So if you, if you guys want a, a far more verbose uh, treatment of all this, please go to this address and uh, read it, if you can bear with me. Uh, file issues, file PRs, and uh, that's it. So if I have time for questions, then please otherwise just knock me off the stage or something. Um, do I have time for questions? Um, what time is it? No, I don't. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>